Hi and welcome to the We Are Zion Sermon Podcast. We are a local church based here in Chennai, India. I'm Christine, your host. We are so glad you are here and our hope is that this will encourage, inspire and instill fresh faith in you. We continue with our series, The Detox. Here's Pastor Geshom with today's message. Hi Church, it's a joy and a privilege to meet with you again in this online experience and I'm honored that I get to share God's word with you all. Even as we've been continuing on the series, The Detox, um, I don't know how many of you are really excited about the series, but I for one have uh, seen over the last three weeks, God's been really working in and through my life personally. There have been so many things God's been revealing time and again. When I just thought I've, I'm doing okay and I fare myself better, it's interesting that God reminds me again from the scriptures how I'm lacking those particular areas. Repentance is an ongoing thing. It's an everyday thing that we have to repent of something or the other because if we are wanting to move in this journey forward, we need to ask God to be with us and change us every step of the way. What we saw in the first week was, are we pretending or are we performing? The following week, we saw whether we actually are having a knockoff template of our repentance where we just say these quick repentant prayers and go uh, carry on with our day. Or do we really take time and have a real repentance of our heart where we ask God to change us, the way we think, the way we uh, cultivate all our thoughts within us so that when we outwork everything physically, we are actually doing what he's called us to do. The third week, we saw how we've built these heart idols. Constantly, when we depend on ourselves, when we do things on our own, we've constructed these heart idols in so many areas of our life. And when we have true worship, God breaks those heart idols because in worship, there's nothing else that can stand except him. And we also saw how many a times we need to claim God's word so that these heart idols don't take their roots in our hearts, that they'll be uprooted. Today, even as we step into the fourth part of the series, we're going to see how we have to let go of unforgiveness. How we have to detox ourselves of unforgiveness. Today, uh, forgiveness is such a big topic. At least the world knows that if you're a Christian, you will know what forgiveness is about. It's very integral to our faith because Jesus came down to earth. He was uh, he died on our behalf so that we'll be forgiven of our sins. And so today I want us to understand uh, Do we really know the value and what forgiveness is all about? When we look at the meaning of forgiveness, it says it is to stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an offense, flaw or mistake. And today we carry this bitter root of unforgiveness because we feel that, you know, we've been wronged really bad. There's nothing in the world that uh, should have happened, but it's happened to me and Uh, I take bitter root of it. I don't allow myself to progress any further. But we must learn to forgive. And it's a tough thing. Today's topic is a tough topic. In fact, um, it's that one nerve which all of us don't want to talk about. All of us have some form of resentment. All of us have some form of um, unforgiveness in our body. It's in our spirit also because uh, we've, we've been hurt. And let's, uh, let's lay it uh, down right now that we are in a hurting world. When we are in a hurting world, we will be hurt by hurting people. Hurting people hurt others. And so even if we have a strain of unforgiveness, we automatically will induce hurt to someone else in the form of our words, in the form of our actions. And sometimes even in not doing anything, we sometimes hurt people. Where we are supposed to react and we don't react. When we are supposed to take a stand and we don't take a stand. When we boil it down, it all comes down to some bitter root of unforgiveness. In 1 John, it clearly says, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. John beautifully says that he is willing to forgive us if we willingly first confess our sins. Today, when we look at the cross, are we freely and willingly able to go there and confess our sins? Because until unless we have a better understanding of us receiving forgiveness, we are never going to be able to forgive others. Uh, Over this last three weeks, as we've been doing this entire detox series, we've been, um, me and my wife both have been giving a lot of examples of our kids. 
And uh, the other day, just uh, a few days back, it's interesting how uh, when you're preparing a sermon, uh, certain life incidences um, just get caught and you think it's a good example. And so this happened. So uh, all our three kids after lunch were playing. Um, my boy started uh, taunting my daughter and saying mean things. And then um, it was the, uh, it was a boy's turn to take the dog out for uh, her regular, uh, you know, pee and poo and all that. And uh, when um, when they had taken her out, she conveniently locked them outside the house. And in the afternoon heat, they were wilting outside. They came back in really frustrated and angry. Before that, what happened was, even as they were fighting, I went in and I told them to apologize to each other and that they can't be mean. Little did that apology even matter there because she decided that she wouldn't forgive and that she felt happy only when she took certain action upon both those two brothers of hers after they have uh, taken them out and she could lock them outside. Today, how many of us are there? We are quick to ask forgiveness in front of God for our sin. But when someone else hurts us, we are quick to react and give them back something. Today, this toxin of unforgiveness has to completely be dealt with. The reason why I say toxin is, today we are so careful. We live in a globalized world. Uh, we live where uh, we all are pretty much using the same thing. Over the last seven to eight years, uh, there's no difference between what a person is using uh, in another country to what a person is using here in India. In fact, we have everything that we get. So today, uh, there are toxins everywhere. For example, uh, microwave has become an essential part of our life. So today we uh, microwave a lot of things. We microwave leftover food. We microwave a lot of things in containers. And for us who all um, have embraced this quarantine lockdown, uh, we've all gotten used to microwaving also a lot. And there are certain containers that you should use for microwaving. There are certain containers you shouldn't use. And scientists have drawn so many conclusions saying that if you don't use the correct material, there are toxins within that plastic or within that material that could get onto your food. And in turn, when that gets in, what happens is you uh, might develop some, uh, in the long term, you might develop some disease. Toxins. We are careful. Today, if we eat too much meat, suddenly we go on this detox of just cleansing our body and making sure there are no toxins inside. History goes on to say that the collapse of the Roman civilization was because of toxin that was there in their water that they consumed, especially amongst the rich in the Roman uh, civilization. The lead containers that they had to hold their water or drink from or to store automatically got mixed with their water. And over a period of few years, the entire civilization, they say, it led to the collapse of it. Toxins are harmful how much more important it is for us to be careful about our spiritual man, about our spiritual body, that we make sure that, that there are no toxins in it. We are so careful today about our physical body. If um, For those of us who are so conscious of working out, we make sure that we work out so that we remain healthy. In turn, we can, we'll have a good um, heart, we'll have uh, a good a good working of our faculties. We make we are so intentional about everything. We are so intentional about what we eat, of how we eat, what vessels we use, and so much, so much, and so on. But today, can we just take over the next twenty minutes to look into our own lives deep and ask God, God, reveal these toxins of unforgiveness so that I can deal with it, and so that I can hand it over to you. Oftentimes, it's not about us dealing with it; it's about handing it over to Jesus. So even before we go into the scripture of Matthew, which I've taken, to me, unforgiveness is like this big moving ship that we are. We are in this ocean. We are heading in this uh, ocean. Unforgiveness looks like this anchor we suddenly just put down on this journey. And so eventually what happens is we let down this anchor of unforgiveness. It slowly starts going down, going down, going down. Finally, when it hits rock bottom, and then suddenly we're just stationed there. We can't move on in life. The journey that we're supposed to go forward, we feel like we're moving forward. We strive, we probably are pushing that boat to move forward, but the anchor is still holding us grounded there. We are not able to see. So today, um, it's interesting that you can actually talk to a person and if you hit that nerve of unforgiveness, that's it. You've just opened a tap fully, a high pressure tap. They'll start pouring down all their bitterness of why this happened, why that person did this. Today, when people touch any part of us, when they get to experience any part of us, 
is there resentment is there unforgiveness that's coming you don't want to be around a person who's not encouraging you don't want to be around a person who's so hurting inside that they all they can do is just see their hurt unforgiveness does that god's wanting to deal with all that because he wants us as his children to move forward he wants us as his children to experience his forgiveness and in turn be people who can forgive so much better even as we read through matthew 18 we're going to see how we can forgive and at the same time how we can deal with unforgiveness in us reading from matthew 18 verses 21 to 22 then peter came to him and asked lord how often should i forgive someone who sins against me seven times no not seven times jesus replied but 70 times 7 it's interesting how peter comes to jesus and says and probably thought if he uh, says the uh, the number which is uh, which denotes completion 7 he thought he can uh, it's a smart answer jesus uh, gives a reply back to peter saying no peter it's not 7 it's 70 times 7 and when we look through the scriptures and when we read through we see that the number it's not about 70 times 7 which is 490 it's not the number or the count that you have to keep but it's as long as you have christ in you you need to continuously keep forgiving today i don't know how many of you but if i had to keep score of someone who i have to forgive i can't go beyond 4 or 5 because after that i'm confused as to um i thought i already forgave them you know and that's how god wants us to go about it he doesn't want us to keep score there's never going to be an app which says forgiveness meter you know and just as you keep forgiving you make a note and then you're going to reach that golden number of 490 no it's not going to happen if jesus is within you it's going to be uh, a part and parcel of your life where god will start working in and through you so that you'll be able to forgive so even as we go through the scriptures we're going to see how we can deal with this toxicity of unforgiveness so the first thing is when we have to get rid of this toxin of unforgiveness we need to be accepting that we are all forgiven by jesus completely you might be like yeah i know i'm forgiven yes we all know we are forgiven by jesus but do we all actually soak it in saying that we are forgiven by jesus completely it comes down to our prayers in fact uh, when uh, if we are honestly seeking forgiveness we go back saying um you know what god i'm sorry about this the next day we still feel you know what i think i didn't press enough i didn't ask god no reading through first john when we read earlier it said if we freely admit he's willing to forgive us but how many of us actually freely admit we uh we measure our words when it comes to asking forgiveness that's probably because in uh the way we deal with people around us we also measure our words when we ask forgiveness but with god we we don't have to take that chance we need to be able to ask god god this is me this is you know who i am you know my heart i'm sorry lord i i lay it over here Th- these were my intentions if we can be that clear to god the forgiveness that we receive will be 100% and so let's look at matthew 18 verses 23 to 27 It goes on to say therefore the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him in the process one of his debtors had brought in who owed him millions of dollars he couldn't pay so his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife his children and everything he owned to pay the debt but the man fell down before the master and begged him please be patient with me and i will pay it all then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt even as we read the scripture jesus wanted to give a picture of what the kingdom of heaven and the way it operates to peter peter had asked the question about how many times to forgive and jesus told him that when a man who owed so much came before the king and was asked to repay it and he couldn't repay it all he could do was to ask the king for forgiveness and say god i'm really sorry and the master the king took pity over him and actually cancelled his entire debt in romans chapter 5 verse 8 it goes on to say but god demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us his love was seen when god the father sent his son to earth so that he'll be this perfect sacrifice so that we'll have we'll be bought with that price which is which cannot be uh, bought by anyone else and that we'll be his own 
His love for us was so much. And so today, when we enter into the throne room of God and ask for forgiveness, God's willing to forgive us. But the question is, are we willing to go and bear it all in front of God? Because uh, we sometimes think, because I've not received forgiveness like that from my parents or from my brother or from, you know, from my own spouse, will God's love also be limited like that and forgiveness also be limited like that? Sometimes God wants us to just to be there in all honesty. Just remember this. God is omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. He can do everything. And he's omnipresent. He's there everywhere. So he knows us inside and out. There's no side that's not hidden to him. Everything is actually seen to him. But the love that he has for us is he loves it when we actually go and ask. Like I see it personally when my children come and personally ask me something. I would love to answer or do everything I can in my capability to help them out. I as an earthly father can think probably this much. The heavenly father, it's amazing how much he can do. It's just that we haven't asked. And so today, some of the burdens that we've been carrying can actually be put to rest because God's forgiven them. Rest assured that God's forgiven. His love for us is so much greater. I would love to read this verse from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. It goes on to say, For it's by grace that you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Today, we don't have to do something so that we can boast and say, you know, God's forgiven me because I did all this, this. No, I went into the throne room of God with a repentant heart. I was just myself and God forgave me. You might be like, you know what? But I heard this earlier. Yes, that's what it looks like. We come with that kind of an attitude, with all humility, knowing that we don't deserve it, Lord. But your love is so much for us that you've forgiven us. And many a times to, we know that God's forgiven us, but we don't accept that forgiveness. So today, can we be accepting? Because to get, deal with this detox of unforgiveness in us, we need to first accept that we are completely forgiven. Every time we go before God, that's why it's beautiful. I love uh, for those of us who partake of the communion. It's a beautiful act because every time we go there, we actually are recounting saying, God, you forgive us. And I, by faith, accept it. We are united together by your blood and by the body we are part of together. And so when we do this as a community together, as a community of believers together, there's so much of unity in this. That unity cannot exist where there's not complete forgiveness. And just remember, if like 10 of us are there and if 10 of us can accept that we are completely forgiven by Jesus, what kind of a atmosphere would that create? It'll just create an atmosphere of unity. And with God, we can do great things. And so here, this forgiveness comes down to the same thing. It's all by faith. So by faith, can we agree today that we are forgiven? And I just want to like say a quick prayer, even as we've just completed this point, that wherever we are at, that we'll be able to let go and ask God for forgiveness completely. Lord, even right now, I just pray, Lord, over each and every one of us, that, Lord, you would detox this unforgiveness out of us, Lord, that we'll be able to accept wholeheartedly, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, as we come before you, that you will forgive us completely. I pray that, Lord, if people are still holding on to it, are still ashamed, if there's a lot of guilt, if, there's, if they're still grieving over their sin, Lord, may you as a loving Father, Holy Spirit, may you just envelop them right now, Lord, in the room that they are, that they'll be completely forgiven, that they'll be, they'll be set free, Lord Jesus. I thank you Lord, that we are able to take this first step of detoxing ourselves of unforgiveness. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 1, verses 5-7 to seven goes on to say like this, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with the one another and the blood of Jesus. His son purifies us from all sin. So today, when we ask God to come into our hearts and when we live out this life that he's called us, his light should shine through us. 
And one of the act for his light to shine through us is that we also start forgiving others around us as Christ followers. Which leads me to the second point. To get rid of this toxin of unforgiveness, we need to allow Jesus to come in and get rid of that toxin out of our system. Because many a times we are trying to deal with it on our own, but we can't. Especially when it comes to forgiving other people around us. Let's go on to read Matthew chapter 18. It says, But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. When the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. It's such a scary thing. The equation that God gives us, if I have forgiven you, equals to you should forgive others. So now in your head, you'll have all these questions come up. But that person said such a mean thing to me. That person cheated me of money. That person wrecked my life because it was some form of abuse that happened. The truth about forgiving others is we don't have to do it alone. Jesus is not calling saying, Geshom, go and forgive that person alone. He's saying, hey, involve me in the mix. Even as we are on this journey, Jesus wants to be with us when we forgive others so that we can forgive them completely. And Honestly, forgiving others is not a one-time thing. It's a journey. Sometimes it's, it's taken four or five years for restoration to happen. For sometimes it's taken, you know, like 10 years, 20 years. But along that, it comes down to us. Are we willing to just be stationary in that same place till we actually are able to forgive them? Are we still willing to move on with Jesus and carry on and allow God to work it out? Forgiving others actually doesn't depend on us. It actually depends how much of God is there in us. Because when that happens, what happens is we leave it into God's hand. And in turn, what happens is he beautifully, even as we learn that, okay, you know what? I have to forgive him. Our prayers automatically change. If you notice, like we automatically start blessing them. We, we honestly, over a period of time, start meaning well for them. That change only happens because Jesus is there in the mix. Reading from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 to 32. The Holy Spirit of God has sealed us in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. So you never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted His holy influence on your life. Lay aside bitter words, temper tantrums, revenge, profanity and insults, but instead be kind and affectionate toward one another. Has God graciously forgiven you? Then graciously forgive one another in the depths of Christ's love. Today, we're able to forgive someone who's so close to us. Oftentimes, we're able to forgive uh, our children or our spouse or sometimes our parents, we're able to forgive. But when it comes to others who are within the family of uh, uh, Christ followers, we struggle to forgive. Let's take Jesus into that mix. So when, I, uh, when I'm saying this, I'm not saying it out of a place of not being mindful of what you've gone through. More than what... Me understanding what you've gone through, Jesus understands what you've gone through. Because he was there in that very situation that you were when you were getting hurt. So he's saying, son or daughter, can I deal with it along with you? Can you, because when we allow God to come into that mix for us to forgive others, it can probably be that wrong word that they said and which hurt us deeply. Or sometimes it for those of us, it could be even that uh, you didn't really expect, they probably, you had confided in them and then they use that against you. They could have betrayed you. So many things could have happened. But Jesus is willing to walk that journey with you. For a lot of us who are uh, watching today, we can probably relate that we need to forgive someone. For some of us who are there outside as parents, probably as older parents, probably uh, we are 
children have struggled to forgive us because of certain things we would have done earlier to them or probably your son or daughter has just walked out of the house or probably you're struggling to forgive your spouse or it could be your parents for sometimes for the stuff that they have said that has just taken bitter root and you struggle to forgive but can you bring jesus into that mix reading from first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 it goes on to say it does not dishonor others it is not self seeking it's not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongs so today can we keep no record of wrongs and it's a journey because as we go along we we'll tend to forget what actually has happened christ's love would have overpowered us so much that we'll be like you know jesus is taken care of it uh, i want to share a personal story and many i i hope many of you uh, catch that when jesus is in the mix sometimes you're not really going to actually meet the person and ask them for forgiveness so growing up uh, early years uh, i was bullied a lot in school from first standard on i was heavily bullied uh, in buses call names uh typical high school uh, you know when you're in school how they bully you for the color of your skin uh, for the way you look for the size that you are for the glasses you wear and everything i was bullied so long and in eventually what happened is i kind of like took that as my identity i created this thing that you know what this is my identity this is who i am this is the color of my skin this is and so it became so ingrained in me till i actually uh somewhere around uh, 10th or 11th when i was part of the youth group and this person talked from psalms and said how he has beautifully knit us i'm reading from psalm 139 verses 13 to 14 in the passion translation it says you form my innermost being shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb i thank you god for making me so mysteriously complex everything you do is marvelously breathtaking It simply amazes me to think about it how thoroughly you know me lord and so today when i look back on that entire episode of being bullied and everything i have forgiven them completely because i know the god who created me has created me so intricately beautiful there's no mistake in what he's done and so i don't have to keep my identity on some of the comments that have been told by people around me and so i i could wholeheartedly forgive and jesus had to take care of that i didn't have to take care of that so today many a times when we allow jesus into the mix this close communion that you're going to have with jesus in us is going to transform us so that we'll start overlooking even certain things that have been done god will start working in us so that we'll be able to see things his way and who are we to question god's ways are higher our minds can't you know i can't condense it neither can we understand it but all we are asked to do is can we journey with jesus so today if you are there hurting because someone has hurt you are you willing to bring jesus into the mix are you willing to ask god god please come in and deal with this toxin of unforgiveness because when he comes into that mix he can make something good come out of this situation when we bring jesus into the mix he allows us to see the big picture going back to genesis there's a story of jacob of how he wronged his older brother esau in fact they are twins he stole his birthright and then after that he left from there and then he went on to lead his life he then was coming back on his journey he decided to leave uh, his father in law's place and then with his whole entire clan of uh, children and the herds and everything he was coming back but he was completely scared of what esau might do because he stole his birthright and everything before that jacob had an encounter with god that encounter with god changed him completely and when he meets him in genesis 33 you can see that when he sees esau jacob gives his beautiful explanation of what it is to be reconciled I'm reading from genesis chapter 33 verses 9 to 11 but esau said i already have plenty my brother keep what you have for yourself no please said jacob if i have found favor in your eyes accept this gift from me for to see your face is like seeing the face of god now that you have received me favorably please accept the present that was brought to you for god has been gracious to me and i have all i need and because jacob insisted he so accepted it reconciliation happens but it happens on god's terms 
if we bring God into the mix, what people will see and what we will eventually see is God orchestrating everything and bringing it beautiful. When we read this, we see how important it is for us to bring God into the mix. It's, it's, when you look at the timeline, it's a little over 40 years. But God brings reconciliation. Today, even as many of us are listening, we might have a lot of family situations where there might be no reconciliation. And oftentimes, we've strived too much on our own strength. And this toxicity of unforgiveness has taken such bitter roots in our hearts. But can we bring Jesus into the mix? C.S. Lewis beautifully puts this. He says, we all agree that forgiveness is a beautiful idea until we have to practice it. As Christ followers, we are known in popular culture that we are people who forgive. Whether we like it or not, we are labeled that way in the world. Christians forgive. They do not retaliate is what the general word is around. But can we be real Christians and Christ followers who practice it today? That it won't be just a characteristic of a Christian, but it will be something part of our lifestyle. It will be something part of our life. One of the beautiful things that happen when we allow Jesus into the mix is that he empowers us to forgive. It's not in our own power that we can forgive someone who's hurt us, but he empowers us. In our area of weakness, he gives us strength. In the area where we don't have words, he puts in the words. In the area where we don't have love and we just have hate, he gives us that love. So today, even as we prayed for the first point, I want to pray for the second point as we heard, that God will come into the mix of unforgiveness so that that toxin will be removed. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, even right now, I just pray, Lord, even as we heard this word, I pray that, Lord, this toxin of unforgiveness, Lord Jesus, will be removed, that you will come into this mix, that you will come, Lord Jesus. I pray that, Lord, there are so many hurt that we've harbored in our life, lifelong, Lord Jesus. We've carried it through and through. But right now, we ask you that you might come and that even as we journey with you every day, even as we read your word, even as we pray, that we'll be able to see you work in and through us and that every stage of our life, we'll be able to let go of everything, Lord. We'll be able to forgive others. And we won't carry that baggage with us, Lord. Even right now, Lord, I pray prophetically, Lord Jesus, over relationships, Lord, that have to be restored, Lord. That because you are coming into the mix right now, this restoration will happen in relationships that are broken, Lord Jesus. I pray that, Lord, even because you are coming into that mix, Lord Jesus, I pray that, Lord, relationships between husband and wife, relationship between father and son, relationship between mother and daughter, relationship between parents and children, relationship between the extended families, relationship between not just our immediate, but our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, relationship between the people outside will be restored, Lord. I pray that, Lord, we as your children will have the right words. We as your children will have the right spirit, Lord Jesus, and we'll operate as you lead us, Lord. We thank you. Be with us. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to this message. We hope you were blessed. To hear more messages like this, make sure to subscribe and check out our podcast channel for past episodes. If you like what you are hearing, consider rating us, subscribing, and even sharing it with friends. That would really help us. For more content from We Are Zion and to connect with us, go to weazion.in. Remember, whoever finds Jesus, finds life.